from my first week long Joe Dispenser retreat and it was definitely an experience. I don't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> being a skeptic, I went in there just highly suspicious of everything and everyone and all the stories and all the things. And I was like, I, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. Like I have to see it with my own eyes to believe it. I'm that kind of person. Uh, so yeah, throughout the course of the week, I, I saw all of it. I, I really did see people having transcendental experiences where their bodies were physically awake, but they, they were not there. I mean, their eyes were darting around, their whole body was shaking. So to answer my initial question that I had going to this, is Joe Dispenza legit or is he a fraud? Are these people with their testimonials real or are they paid actors? And uh, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that these testimonials are true. There are people here who have experienced genuine healings, life-changing miracles, that has happened. It was the most intensive meditation, retreat, workshop, program, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I have ever been through. There was a lot of yelling and screaming, which um, if you haven't been to a Joe Dispenza event before like myself and you thought that meditation was quiet and peaceful, well, you're in for a surprise. Yeah, that, that's not how the meditations are with Joe Dispenza. People are loud, they're screaming, they're shaking, they're rolling around, they're, there's just all kinds of things. Like, I kind of wish I had prepped for this retreat by listening to heavy metal music because that's kind of what it sounded like at some points. And for someone like me who's sensitive to loud noises, like, I don't even like it when people talk loud. I, I'm a very calm and peaceful person. I like it when it's quiet. So to go to this event where I'm listening to people scream at the top of their lungs every single day, um, that in itself was challenging to deal with. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're like me and you're sensitive to loud noises, Maybe listen to some heavy metal music before you go. And uh, oh, also watch some videos of fainting goats. If you haven't heard of fainting goats, they're literally goats that will just spontaneously faint. Um, I'm, I can show you a video of them right now. Uh, but yeah, that's, that is something else that you'll witness when you go. Yeah, so that was something that I was not prepared for when we were doing the walking meditations. Uh, I saw a lot of people just passing out, eating the sand. Like they were, they were just gone. Um, and, and this happened over and over and over. It wasn't just like one or two people. It was like probably third to half of the people out on the beach were just passing out while they're doing the breath. So that was something when I first saw this happening during the walking meditations, I was startled. I was like, oh my God, are these people okay? And they try to warn us and tell us that these people are fine. And, you may fall, you may pass out, but you know, but it was just like nonstop people in the sand. Like it was, I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. I, I'm still right now trying to process everything that I witnessed. And so for someone who's new to the space, this was, really forcing me out of my comfort zone. It was really forcing me to dive in the deep end. And I, there were times when I was like, I don't know what's going on or why I'm here, but uh, I signed up for this for a reason. So let me just, let me just give it my best. There, There's just so much that he put us through in that last week. I'm still a little bit overwhelmed and I'm still trying to process everything that we did in this past week. Um, every single morning we woke up and we started meditating either at 6 a.m. or 4 a.m. And this is every single day. Uh, there were two days when we did walking meditation in the morning and we got to start an hour later because of the sea turtles, but I bet you if we didn't have the sea turtles, then we would have started at 6 a.m. those days too. Um, it was the most intensive meditation, retreat, workshop, program, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I have ever been through. It was really challenging for me at first. So yeah, I made videos on when I first got there, day one, what was my first impression. What did I sign up for? What did I sign up for? What did I do to myself? <laughs> and day two, the second day I was having a lot of pain with my body. I thought I was gonna throw up. I had massive headaches. Like it was, and, and more videos throughout the week of what we did, where we went. I met a lot of amazing people. Um, some of them had really crazy stories about their mystical experiences. There's one guy that I met at breakfast the very last day and he had an insane encounter with these blue beings. Still, I'm trying to figure out which that, you know, that was something I did not come across. I put all these new questions into my mind too, because I was not aware of blue beings. I didn't know blue beings were a thing. And I didn't think that they would be there at the retreat. Uh, come to find out they're there all the time. So I have more questions coming out of this retreat than I did going in. So yeah, that really made me rethink things. And I'll talk about that after this. So I'm gonna show you the videos about my experience, how it was for me during the retreat. And then I'm gonna talk to you about uh, some of the takeaways and lessons that I learned from all of this and the really, incredible conversation about blue beans. Now, after my conversation with the guy who encountered these blue beings, I'm kind of questioning as to how this is happening. Uh, I thought we were healing ourselves with this energy, healing each other with our heart coherence, because that's what they were telling us at the retreat. But then I met this guy and he kind of made me rethink everything because he was talking about um, these blue beans.
did I sign up for? What did I do to myself? What did I? Like this is a lot more than what I bargained for, and I didn't realize that I was signing up for such an intensive week-long workshop. So yeah, in case anyone else is interested in doing one of these, just be mentally prepared for doing a lot of work. Um, it is nice that they do provide breakfast and lunch. They're really nice meals and uh, we do get breaks throughout, but it's still 14 hour day. I think they told us for this event, we have people from 57 countries. People flew from 57 different countries to come to this retreat, which is crazy. Um, there's probably about 1,500 of us, and uh, there are people of all ages, people who look like they're maybe in their teens, and elderly folks who look like they might be in their 80s, and everyone's here doing it. It's been challenging, I'm not gonna lie. The first day and the second day, I was having a lot of pain with my body. I thought I was gonna throw up. I had massive headaches. Like, it was intense, going through a lot. as the week unfolds if anything interesting happens um, so far it's just been a lot of noises in the meditations like people are just releasing sounds they're screaming they're laughing they're crying <laughs> <laughs> takeaways from this past week are number one uh joe dispensa is a meditation drill sergeant he is so serious about this stuff he, he doesn't let you slack off he doesn't let you shortchange yourself he makes you show up on time because if you're not on time he locks you out of the ballroom he is no joke when it comes to this stuff he is really serious about his craft and uh because he was so determined to get us to do our best and to go deeper into this experience i, I think that is what motivated me to stick it out because the first day I, I thought I was going to throw, I literally for like the two and a half hours of meditation, the whole time I thought I was going to vomit on myself. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it through the week. This is the first day and I feel this awful. And anyways, we kept going. Um, and that was something too, when I looked around the room, I'm like, if all these people are here and they're not complaining, then I have no room to complain. Again, these healings are real. Whether these people are healing themselves or whether we're healing each other doing the coherence healings, I don't really know anymore um, because now there are these blue beings in the picture and I wasn't aware of them before. So that's very curious. And yes, Joe Dispenza is a legitimate person in his field of work. He is the most dedicated meditation instructor that I have met so far in my life. He is really, really adamant about getting people to do the work. He's adamant about pushing people beyond their limits. And he's really passionate about getting people to reprogram themselves out of their past lives. And I didn't realize how badly I needed to do that with my own life until after this week was over. Um, so yeah, that was that was a really great takeaway. That is something now that I've come back home, I realize when I do certain things, I'm like, this is how I always do it. I need to try something new. I need to try something different. I need to break these old patterns. Like I'm aware of it now. So that's been a, a positive change so far. I think what was really inspiring um, was meeting people who really believe in this work. And they talked about how they will meditate two to three hours a day, every single day. And that they've been doing this for years and years and years, three years, five years, 10 years, like they meditate every single day. And that to me was just so inspiring because I meditate zero times a day. Um, and, and that was something that they all encouraged me to do was because I was new and it was my first experience. They really encouraged me to take this home with me and to continue this forward, to not just have this be a one and done type of deal, to really integrate this into my life. Um, so that was great to just have that encouragement. I did not have any mystical experiences. I did not get any insights or any answers to my life that I was hoping to get. Um, I didn't get any of that. I, I was basically struggling to overcome my physical discomfort of being nauseous, feeling like I was going to throw up. I had massive headaches the first half of the week. Uh, I had a lot of back pain. I've been going to the chiropractor every week for, gosh, probably almost eight years now. I had back pain and just sitting 
and meditating and you know when you're sitting he tells you to sit up straight too you can't slouch or lean back against the you know, he's like sit up straight so just overcoming my physical discomfort i think that was what i was working with most of the week and also getting to a place where i could really clear my mind and to just let these thoughts pass through without interrupting my meditation that also was challenging um but i'm glad i did this because it did push me beyond my limits it did teach me that i don't have to obey my body that my mind and my spirit are stronger and that I can overcome this discomfort. And we did do a four and a half plus hour meditation one day. So that's something uh, I could check off in the books, say I've done before. So now when I, I tell myself I don't have time to meditate for 30 minutes a day, I can remind myself that I've done four and a half hours. So 30 minutes is a walk in the park compared to what I've already overcome. So those are great takeaways. I think I've learned that I have a lot more willpower and I have more discipline and endurance than I initially thought going into this retreat. Um, I've also learned to become more aware of my old patterns in my life. Um, integrating this going forward, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm still like trying to figure out how to add in the meditation into my daily habits. Everyone says to do it in the morning, but the way that my life is now, I, I don't have a normal sleep schedule. I wake up like all different hours of the day, just depending on what I have going on that week. And then I have a dog who barks at like everything. So <laughs> there, that's one thing, like when I'm meditating, my dog's barking, like it's just really hard to concentrate. Um, that happened this morning, actually. I, like I wanted to get into this meditative state and then my dog just started barking like crazy because somebody was at the door and I was just like, oh my gosh. So um, anyways, yeah, that's, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to figure that part out. Um, I wanna continue to do the work. I just have to figure out the best plan of action to implement it. So now I have to tell you about this out of this world conversation I had with this guy at breakfast who was at his first Joe Dispenza retreat too with his wife. And it was one of the first meditations that we did when we got there. He closed his eyes and he got into that empty space, that void. And then all of a sudden he says these blue beings appeared. And then they were, they're massive. They're not like normals. They're like giant blue things that were coming to him. Then there were multiple. It wasn't just one, it was a lot of them. And they were coming to him and they were trying to talk to him and communicate with him but he was like he like didn't know what they were saying he didn't know what they wanted from him and he he said he freaked out he locked himself in his room and i wouldn't come out for the next four days and then he said when he finally did feel comfortable coming back out and trying the meditations again they came to him again and then he was freaking out because he's like i feel like these blue beings are just gonna follow me everywhere they're gonna follow me home and his wife was like yeah we don't really know what we're gonna do about this because she was like i thought we were just coming here to learn to meditate and now that my husband has had this mystical experience and we're taking these blue things home with us like i don't know what's gonna happen to our lives and they were kind of worried because they, they just didn't understand what was happening they didn't know why these things were all coming to him and like trying to communicate with him and he was like i don't know what they want from me and it, it was it was one of those things where I could tell this man was genuinely scared, concerned, worried. His wife felt the same way. She was like, my husband, he's a real tough guy. Like he's from Detroit. And he was, he was a big dude, like, like big. He was like six, three, like maybe three. I mean, he was a big, big dude. And he was shaken up by this experience. And what was really curious to me was when I talked to some people asking them if they've heard of these blue beings or what these blue beings are, a lot of people at the retreat told me they were light beings. Now I have met many, many people, some of my personal friends who have encountered light beings in different dimensions or in altered states or when they're on psychedelic trips, they'll, they'll see other dimensional beings. Now when they're light beings, at least from the people that I personally know, all of their personal accounts of light beings are similar in that they knew that these were benevolent, loving, kind beings. They had no doubt in their mind that these were angels, they were cherubs, they were elves. I've had two friends encounter elves and they, they knew these elves were there to help them, that they felt this love, this warm energy just radiating through them, that there were these beautiful creatures of light with geometric patterns and crystal mind structures and they were made with magnificent beauty. I and mean, that's, that's typically what I have heard from the people that I have encountered who have had these types of experiences. Now this guy at breakfast, he didn't describe these blue things in that way at all. He, he, he honestly, the, the impression I got was he thought they were a little bit threatening. I mean, he didn't say that, but that was the energy that I felt from him was he, he felt a need to run and hide and he didn't feel safe around these beings. And that's very different from all the other experiences from people that I personally have met. Uh, of course, you know, everyone's experience is different and I haven't heard everyone's experiences out there, but at least from the personal friends that I have who have encountered other dimensional beings or light beings, they know when they are benevolent and loving beings. This guy did not feel that way about these blue things. And then when I started looking into these blue beings and watching people's testimonials and just digging deeper into this, it makes me very curious because some people are describing these blue beings as light beings. 
I'm, I'm skeptical of that because it didn't sound like to me from this guy that I met, he's the only one that I have met in person who has encountered blue beams and he encountered them multiple times. Um, he didn't describe them as being loving or kind or friendly or filling him with warm energy. I mean, that's, that's not what he describes. I have come across a lot of testimonials out there that say these blue beings come into these healings and they help heal people, that they do do good things and they help people heal. But my question is why, right? Like why, why them and why us? Like why are these blue things specifically coming to Joe Dispenza's retreats and why are they coming to his retreats over and over again? Because many people have seen these blue beings. Where are these beings coming from? Like why do they specifically help the people at the retreats out and why do we even need them to help people heal like why why can't we just heal ourselves with our own energy or heal each other with our shared community energy why do we need other dimensional beings to come in to help facilitate that and then why is it always these guys why is it always blue beings why are they tall and thin and they have these humanoid shapes i mean this is just from the descriptions that i've come across it's always the same beings it's very consistent but it's like why them why not any of the other dimensional beings out of the infinite number of other dimensional beings out there because there are so many there are so so many i, I know it's not just blue beings out there in the quantum field like there must be red ones pink ones orange ones and they're not all going to be big and tall they've got to be some short and stocky ones too you know body positivity diversity that's got to exist in the quantum realm so i'm really curious as to why specifically these guys keep showing up and why do people seem to have these guys facilitate the healings for them like why why so after meeting this guy, I am now filled with more questions coming out of this retreat than I was going into it, which is cool because it gives me more curiosity and more reason to want to explore this a little further. If any of you guys have personal experiences with blue beings or have a better understanding of why people keep encountering them at these events, like why these specific beings and why at these events and what is the relationship or is there a relationship? If anyone has deeper understanding about this or any insights that you can share in the comments with me, that would be really amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm just really curious. I'm really, really, really curious about this. I, I do still feel pretty much the same. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I, I've noticed any big shifts or changes, um, to be fair. I, I also didn't have any mystical experiences or feel like surges of energy going through me. Um, I think overall it was a positive experience. There were a lot of challenges. I had a lot of discomfort in my body that I had to overcome, but I did learn to overcome it. And so I'm happy that I did that. Um, I'm proud of myself for the work that I did. And I really appreciate the community that was there. I really enjoyed meeting everyone that I met. I have so much fun talking to people during lunch, during breakfast. It was definitely a very rewarding experience. It was not easy. I don't want anyone else going into this thinking that it's going to be easy because that was a mistake that I made. Um, it's an intensive and it is a lot of work and you're the only one who can do it because everybody else is in the same boat. It's not like I can meditate for you, you can meditate for me. No, we're all in it together. We all start at the same time, we end at the same time. So everybody's got to do their own part. I want to say too that I have a lot of respect for Joe Dispenza because I, I didn't realize this before. Um, the first couple of days, I thought that the meditations were just recordings because he has so many recorded meditations. But during these retreats, he live proctors every single one of these meditations himself. And there was this one girl I met, she she had like problems with her um, eye mask and she just wasn't getting into the meditation. So she said she just took her eye mask off and she had her eyes open. She wasn't really meditating, but she was um, watching Joe Dispenza and he was standing. He was standing on the stage with a mic and he was standing and proctoring the entire meditation for us while standing, standing, which I mean, for someone like me who has back pain, for me to even stand for longer than 30 minutes puts a lot of strain on my body. And I'm, I'm literally like in physical pain if I, if I have to stand for more than an hour. And Joe Spencer is up there standing for multiple hours. Like, so I have a lot of respect for him to just be able to have the dedication to do that for us because none of us are asking him to do that. You know, if he had just played one of his recorded meditations, we wouldn't know the difference. Our eyes are closed. We're in the zone. You know, we, we're not aware of what's going on, but he's dedicated to his work and he's dedicated to us. And he, he shows up and he does what he's supposed to do even without being asked to do it. So I, I really honor him for that. I really respect him for that. And I, I think every single dollar that he has made from that retreat, he has genuinely earned it the hard way because he put in so much work. He put in so much dedication. So yeah, I think he definitely delivered a lot of value. I learned a lot from him. It's great that his team is collecting data from participants and, and that they have scientific data and information now backing up their claims. I think that's wonderful what they're doing. So if you're thinking about trying out a week-long Joe Dispenser retreat, I would say absolutely go for it. Just 
understand it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be long days. Your back is going to probably at some point hurt. So maybe get yourself a pillow, a cushion, maybe like some type of back support, which I don't know. And uh, maybe you might want to watch some videos of Faint and Goes while you're playing heavy metal music in the background, just so that you desensitize yourself to what you're going to witness when you go to one of these retreats. I mean, it's, it's loud. It's not even, it's not like mild scream. No, these people are screaming at the top of their lungs. It's like this. <laughs> That's not even an exaggeration. It's exactly like that. If you go into it with a really open mind, and I mean extremely open, not just like, oh, I'm gonna be able to relax and get into this meditative state. Like, no, tell yourself that you might encounter blue beings, that you might start shaking uncontrollably, that you might be in a trance and you might have your head wobbling and your eyes rolling in the back of your head and all this crazy stuff happened to you. And uh, that that's just part of what you should be prepared for when you go into one of these retreats, because that is what I saw. That is really, truly what I saw with my own two eyes. So yeah, that's my honest review. So I hope this video has helped out some of you who have been curious about wanting to go or who maybe had some skepticism like I did and you wanted to hear the truth. And I, I'm telling you, you really do see unusual and uncommon experiences at these retreats and the people that you meet in this community. They are some of the kindest, most loving people that you'll meet in your life. They're really wonderful folks there. Um, and you're really going to do a lot of work, whether you want to or not, you're going to end up, you're going to do a lot of work. So. Uh, if you're if you're ready for the challenge and if you're ready for these experiences, I would say just do it for fun Just try it out and see what you encounter or what crazy stories you come across what crazy things you witness and It's just a grab bag of surprises. You, you don't know what you're gonna get. Who knows? You, you might encounter blue beings. You might encounter a spontaneous healing. You might go into a state of trance Everything is fair game at a Joe Dispenza retreat. So just go into it with open arms <laughs>